I'm Stanley, and I work at Baxter's Auto Parts. Lately at Baxter, we've been getting a lot of questions about cars. How do you do this? When do you do that? What happens when your car catches on fire? So we decided to answer all these questions in a new feature at BaxterAutoParts.com. But enough about me. Let's go see what Preston's doing. So, Preston, how do we change our oil? Can you unscrew a bottle? I sure can. You can change your own oil! Hold my umbrella. Well, alrighty then. First of all, if you've been driving your car, you need to let it sit for at least half an hour, because that stuff gets hot. Alright, the first thing you need to do is you need to make sure your car is safe because you're going to be crawling around underneath it. What I would suggest you do is to block off the back wheel with something so it doesn't roll backwards. Shh. He's sleeping. We're underneath our car right now. You need to find this. This is your oil pan. This is where all your engine oil is. Underneath that pan, there's a nut. We're going to unscrew this nut and all this oil is going to be spilling out. There we go. And now we play the waiting game. So now this is the most important part. Once the oil is done draining out, you need to clean that off. And you need to put the nut back in. This will keep your new oil from spilling out when you put the new oil in. Well that was easy. Now we just need to put the oil back in the engine. You're gonna need a funnel for this. Don't lose that. And you're going to want to fill this up to the specified amount that's probably listed in your owner's manual. And there are going to be different amounts for different cars. You can check to make sure there's enough by taking out your dipstick and seeing how far the oil goes up the line. Ideally, you want the oil to come to about halfway on the, on the dipstick rod. That's it, friends. You've just changed your oil. Wasn't that easy? That sure was, Preston. Thanks. Any time. You're as cold as ice. You're willing to sacrifice.